So I mentioned what we do in Shenzhen. So we have labs, suppliers, experts in-house, and uh, we have our, our supply chain expert there. And, uh, and right in, all this uh, right in the middle of the electronics market in, in Shenzhen. So the idea is really to find a way to compress the timelines of development by having access to better resources. So uh, the teams joining our program tell us that in, a, in basically a week, they do about a month of work. Uh, so like in a year, they can do like, uh, in three, four months, uh, they can do the work of, of a year at lower cost and lower risk. So um, yeah, um, basically uh, all this to uh, identify those uh, um, funding gaps uh, that uh, just before A, when you hit the market fit and you can find sales, there's, there are opportunities uh, if you have uh, the right filters uh, to look at, uh, at, the, at the projects. And uh, also understand that you won't find the same metrics that you find in, uh, in software companies like, like those. So um, to wrap up, um, I think the ideas that we, we got over the years is that we know that deep tech companies won't take off as quickly as software, but the trajectory can actually uh, be, be quite, uh, quite attractive as well. Uh, and there's a sweet spot uh, at, the, at the seed stage just before uh, you have this inflection point. All right, so that's all I have uh, for this. I'm happy to take uh, like, uh, a few questions if you have. Back one slide. Oh, you said? Back, back one slide. This one? Oh, yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, I did comment on this one. Those are like the questions we, we think is better to focus on and try to identify very clearly uh, the total addressable market by the companies rather than ask for you know, uh, like, uh, the, the other software type metrics. Identify who pays, um, because as you saw, the, for example, the modular robot, one example, or uh, the, the party who pays is actually schools, on the school budget, it's not end users. Uh, and in the case of the, um, uh, the pain management uh, technology, that will be uh, doctors, hospital, on the healthcare system, rather than end users as well. <laughs> and that makes a, hu a huge difference in, a, in the, the type of markets you can address. Uh, and the last thing is, of course, uh, the differentiation. Um, the challenge here is that the best technology doesn't always win. I think history has proven that over and over. Uh, but as an investor, it's good to understand how different and how much better the technology is compared to that other company that I just have raised uh, just before you. All right, any other question you might have? Yes. The sweet spot is a result of what the uh, is the result of the fact that at the at the beginning you don't have sales, you have R and D and uh, prototyping, manufacturing that might take one, two, sometimes three years, um, and at that time the capital requirements not necessarily very large, um, and if you get close to the point uh, where they can actually launch, um, it's uh, you don't have sales numbers. So in terms of a uh, uh, like the pickup of a of the, the growth of the company is not there, but you're very close to, to have this uh, this takeoff point, this inflection point. Pre-traction. Pre-traction, that's right. But pre-traction on the, I'm gonna to try to use this nifty little gadget. Pre-traction here versus there is a is very different level of risk. You, yes. you mentioned a um, statistic around 14 years and 300 million for SaaS. Yes. To IPO, what is this? What is that for deep tech? Um, if you start year one, and also if you start at the sweet spot. So we couldn't find any consolidated figures for that. So we, are, um, I was happy that somebody did the job for for SaaS for deep tech. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily that much different. Um, and what's interesting is that some of uh, some deep tech companies seem to be able to go public not with sometimes less funding or, or sometimes faster. So, um, but. I think it's kind of case by case. But I was surprised how SaaS were actually taking so so long on so much so much capital. SaaS is doing that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Is deep tech going to do that on purpose, or do you think that they're going to go IPO earlier on purpose? I think they can. What's interesting with deep tech is that very often you have sales, you have revenue on, on profit when you go public, which is not the case from like some very famous car sharing companies, for example. Um, so that's. Um, I think deep tech has this advantage that you, that you have sales, um, and because of that, that can be really attractive for for going public earlier. And almost more importantly, the sales are generating a profit. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So sales and profit. Well, that's I mean, yeah. plenty of SaaS companies go public with revenue without being profitable. So. Yeah. Yes. So can you go back one slide? Yes. Again? Okay. So, on your point number three, mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if you can just provide a little bit of your perspective. You're like, what is what is different? And you look at the technology and you want to compare it. And just for context, so I, I work at a firm where mostly biotech mm -hmm. and pharma. And in there, like the data, clinical trial data, is very public. Mm -hmm. right? And so I can go out and read papers and compare one drug to another drug and really get a sense of the competition and the technology. Mm -hmm. I've dipped my toes a little bit in some of this hard tech stuff, and I struggle sometimes to find how to do this diligence in the best possible format. Because it seems to me, in some cases, if I'm not always going out and talking with companies and signing NDAs with them and getting proprietary data to be compared across multiple different companies, that I don't have a good sense of what is really different. How do you approach this problem? So in our case, because we invest at the super early stage, generally you don't have that much data to rely on. So it's, uh, it's mostly about the the general evaluation of the tech, like the technical differences. Um, generally, there's some competitive advantage either on cost, on speed, on scalability, something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, in our case, we, we can't really rely on, on something that, that's uh, strongly data-driven. Uh, probably at later stages, you can do that. Uh, but I think it really depends on the type of, of tech you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a, like a, a simple answer to that question. Right. No more questions, then, uh, then we can take a little break. Thank you very much.